Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Um, as a Christian, uh, you hear that you need to read the Bible. You hear that you need to fast. You hear that you need to pray. But many times we do it out of duty. Not, not out of a, a, a relationship with Jesus. I just felt like I needed to get it done. Right? I wake up in the morning and, 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 and I'm a, um, well, my husband is very competitive, but I'm competitive in a different way. So if, he's, he, if he read one chapter, I need to read 20. If he prayed for five minutes, I need to pray at least seven. If he prayed in the spirit for 10 minutes, I needed 20. Right? Because then I need, I, I need to feel great. I need to feel that I was good with God. I needed to make sure that I did my part, that, that I checked in the morning, that he saw me, that I read, Lord, you saw me. I was reading seven chapters more than my husband. He read one over and over. I don't know if you count that. I don't count it. And I remember doing that for a few years. I'm embarrassed to say that, but for a few years. And at some point in my life, I was reading like 20, 27 chapters a day. But I had this, this constant anxiety inside of me while I'm reading the Bible. Okay, 27, I need 28. I was competing against myself. Yesterday I read 27, so tonight I need to put in 28 because I felt that God would feel better about me. And I would feel great. And because I'm a woman that loves to be organized, I would I, I would put my things on 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 the refrigerator. I would put my my days of fasting, and I was so consumed with fasting, but I wasn't consumed with being in the presence of God. I was so consumed, like, okay, did I eat too many potatoes? Have you ever fasted like that? I fasted for years like that. Oh my gosh! I think I don't know if God is pleased with me. I, when you're fasting, you shouldn't be pleasing your 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 flesh. And I think I have too many potatoes. And some days I added some chips, potato chips. <laughs> no, they're potatoes. It just happened that they were converted into chips. <laughs> but I had a few there. And they were put in my mouth and I would open my mouth. You know, forgive me, Lord. And, and go and hit myself. No, I didn't. But I would feel like that. I would feel like that. And, and then my husband and I would be fasting at the same time. And he would come and is God speaking to you? No, he's mad at me. I was like, you don't understand. I just, you don't understand what I did. I had too many potatoes. And he's like, but babe, that's okay. It's not how much you eat, but they were potato chips. It's okay. He forgave you. But for years, I was consumed. And, and at the church that we were brought up, it's an amazing church. It's a faith church. They teach you to read the Bible, to do all these things. So I was doing all those things. But I was so consumed and uh, consumed with it because of, in January, what they do is they fast 31 days um, in those times. By the end of 31 days, I was so stressed that people would ask me, did you enter his rest? Oh, no. I was rest less because I was, I was so worried. I was so worried that I didn't read the Bible enough, that I didn't pray enough, that I maybe my prayer was too formal. Maybe I was so consumed in trying to be perfect in everything that I did. And I remember the year that God set me free. I was sitting and I was, uh, after the fast, this is, I don't know, probably not too long ago, like last year, no, just kidding. Uh, it, was <laughs> it, was, it was probably three years or four years into it, me doing this every year insanity in January that's what would happen to me insanity in January so I, after the 31 days um, I remember just reading my Bible and I was like okay we're, we're done with the fast I think I could go back to 14 chapters and I was reading 14 chapters and when I was done I felt so guilty and I felt like you're not Virginia, when are you going to grow? You, you should be doing more. And, and so I'm having a conversation with God, and I feel like God says, Virginia, I don't ask you to read the word for me. You think you're doing me a favor. We think we're doing God a favor. Right? I haven't read the word, Lord. Oh, my God, you're so concerned what God is thinking of you. No, he wants you to read the word so the word can help you, so the word can transform you. It's not about him. It's about you being in the word for you. See, if we see it like that, then we don't see it as a, as a, as a duty that we need to do. No, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a relationship with him. 
in the morning I'm going to wake up and, and, and believe me, I had to die to that place. For me to, to read four chapters was like, sin, sin, and neon. Because I felt like it's not enough. It's, no, but if I read four chapters, even if I read one chapter, even if I read one, one, one scripture and I practice it that day, that's what matters. The word is not for God. The word is for you. Prayer is not for God. It's for you to communicate with him. So if you haven't joined in this 21 days of prayer and fasting, join. And let us enjoy who we are in Jesus. He wants us to, to be victorious this year. I have an amazing message. I'm not going to go into that. But God gave, already gave me a message. Well, he says that we need to, we cannot repeat 2016. The calendar does not define a new year in our lives. God is not interested in a new year. We are like, oh, my God, new slate, 2017, we started good. And No, God is interested in a new you in 2017. But we are not going to be victorious, no, because God has not given us the victory. We're not going to walk in it if we continue to think the same way that I thought last year. Because 2017 is victorious, but in 2017, we're going to see trials and tribulations. But in 2017, due to the word of God being, being implanted in us, we're going to see life in a different way. And God wants you to be resilient. Believe me, I'm preaching to myself. He told me, Virginia, you're expecting a victorious 2017, so stop thinking like 2016 in some of your areas of your life. Don't wait for the end result. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? Faith is calling those things that are not as though what? They are. But we want to see faith. In, 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 a, in, a, in the five senses, I want to see a little bit of proof, right? You're praying for your family, I see no proof. You're praying for your children, I see no proof yet. No, God... The proof is not in your children. The proof is not in your family. The proof is not in the economy. The proof is in the word of God. There we have it. Okay, so you don't believe me. Let's go to the first scripture. Let's go to 2 Timothy 1, 7. Because I believe that if we're going to be super resilient and victorious this year, we need to kick fear out of our hearts. Fear is the opposite of faith. And you need to know that if you're dealing with fear, you might say, you know what, I'm super good because I'm so like spiritually that I don't feel fear. Good for you. Are you worried? That's the cousin of fear. That's like a low temperature. You haven't gotten the fear yet, the fever, but the low temperature is going higher. When we have anxiety in our heart, oh, believe me, I know about that. That means fear is coming in my heart. When I have doubt, it means that I'm allowing fear to come and speak into my life. When I am allowed all these things to come, we need to recognize that we're operating in fear. If you're still expecting something bad to happen. You know, when I came to the Lord, I was always expecting things bad to happen because I told myself, I'm not going to encourage myself. I'd rather expect the worst. So if the worst happened, you know what, nothing happens because I had no expectation. But it's according to your faith, right, that it's going to be unto us. Whatever your expectation you're having about this year, that's what we're going to get. So we need to address, am I operating a little worry, a little bit of fear, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of doubt? Because this is what the word of God says. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and, lo and love. And of a sound mind. And I have another translation. I love this translation. It says, God gave us his spirit. And the spirit doesn't make us weak and fearful. Instead, the spirit gives us power and love and help us, what? Control ourselves. I usually say that, I repeat this um, very often, that I used to think that I wasn't a very creative person. 
until the Lord told me, oh, no, you're pretty creative. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You always speak wonderful things. He says, no, you're pretty creative. You creating all these illusions. You're creating all of these situations that have not taken place. You have these conversations with people that you haven't even talked yet. Have you done that? You haven't gone to the doctors, but you already saw your conversation with the doctor. You already saw what he's going to tell you. He says, oh, no, you're creative because I'm the creator. And there's creativity in us. And so if we're going to operate in, in faith, we need to use our creativity to create the goodness of God in our lives. We need to create possibilities in Christ, outcomes in Christ. We tend to see the worst. You're like, no, I'm a Christian. I don't do that. Oh, yes, you do. If you're building castles in your own imagination, if you're building prisons in your own imagination, if you are, uh, have you ever um, had a, um, um, like a, a, a I want to say a fight with somebody that, you know, you don't like or they did something to you. But you're fearful, so you don't want to confront them. But in your mind, you already had that conflict. And you won. And you told her, you told him, in your imagination. But when you see them, you walk the other way. Because there's fear residing in you. You see, the faith makes us bold. If you would have met me 20 years ago, I was the more, uh, the most awkward. I'm still awkward, but now I'm content with who I am. Peculiar, the Lord, I told him one time I was crying to the, the Lord. You know, he always, he always, he's so good. I was complaining to God. And it was like, when the Lord asked me to come and do this. And I said, Lord, I was crying to him. And I was like, Lord, you know, I'm so peculiar. You know, I'm kind of awkward. And I told him all those things. And you know, I have an accent. You know what he told me? Uh, yes, you do. <laughs> Get over yourself. You see, he's so good. You should have conversation with him. He will get rid of all of your, like, pride. You don't think he's pride. You're like, oh, but I have this. How am I going to use me, Lord? Like, uh. I don't know why I told you the story. <laughs> Anyways, if we're somebody here. Okay, so this is what the Lord said to me. I want you to tell my children that I want them to declare war on fear. We need to declare war. We're already in a war anyways, right? We have been called to live by faith. We have been called to fight the good fight of faith. The beautiful, good means beautiful. He loves it when, we're, when we are being resilient. He loves it when we get up and we don't feel it, but yet we speak what we don't, what we don't feel. When we walk, we don't want to go to church, but you made it tonight. Do you know that that's faith? But we don't see it like that. No, faith should be I'm feeling awesome. No, 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 you didn't feel like coming, but you came. And that's beautiful to him because you're overcoming in your process. So he says, I want you, I want, I want you to tell them that I want them to do a war on fear. Because if we're going to see our victory, if we're going to walk in our, in, our, in our promises. And, and I encourage you, if, if, you love to read, uh, regard, if you love to read prophecies and what prophets are saying, um, there are so many things, like, uh, prof, uh, things that you can go on online. I think one of them is the Elijah's List. I don't know if you have heard of them. If not, just go Google them. And, the, you know, they're, 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 they're sound mind people. And God is speaking in the best, the, the word for 2017 is like breakthrough, victory. And all these wonderful things that we read it, like I was reading, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't feel all these things. And, and that's what I'm, I'm asking you today, that you, we, need to make, uh, we need to make a decision. And we're going to say, we're going we're gonna to make war against fear. And do you know how fear comes into, into our lives? By our five senses. Fear comes by what we hear. Fear comes by what we hear. 
fear comes and all these things come by what we see, what, what we hear, what we taste, what we touch, what we see. And we need to know that we're not led by our senses. We are having been called to live and, and walk this victorious life by our senses. God wants you to walk in faith. Say, God wants me to walk in faith. Yes, he does. Let me give you a few scriptures. This year, we're not going to be living under the shadow of fear. He wants you to live under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalms 91.1 says this, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If, if we're going to abide under shadows, no, he doesn't want us to abide under shadows. Shadows of the things that may, may come. You know, when my husband was sick, uh, got sick with um, cancer, I, I, we got the victory, you know. It was really awesome when we went to the hospital and they said, okay, we're releasing you from City of Hope. Uh, you know, all you have to do is come back. I, that, that was after a whole year of fighting and you know, one doctor said, you don't have this, but then the next month it's like, no, now you have like, in your lungs you have cancer. It was just craziness. A whole year that we need to stand and stand and stand and stand and stand. And then all of a sudden they give you the release form and they'll say, you know what? Awesome. You are, you are uh, cancer free. We'll see you in six months. And then in those six months, shadows will come. Shadows of what? Shadows of what might happen. All of a sudden, he couldn't breathe. Oh, my gosh, maybe your lungs. Maybe, you know, it, it, you live under that shadow. And I believe that that's what David would encourage himself. And, and, and I want you to go to Psalms 23 because this is what he says. He says, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death. What is the valley of death? Dark places in our lives, right? Not literally walking through a valley of death, but dark places. Have you ever been in a dark place in your life? And there's only a little light that comes in. The only way to see a shadow if it's a light is present. And shadows are always bigger than what they seem. But he says, I will fear not evil. He says, I will fear no evil for your rod and your staff. They comfort me. What does, what does that mean? It was the word of God comforted David. He says, I'm not going to fear shadows. And God doesn't want you to fear shadows to come. He wants you to be under the shadow of the Almighty. He wants you to dwell in his presence. He wants you to come in every single day and you abide under his presence. And when the enemy comes and the lies of the devil come and the doubt comes and the unbelief comes, that you're able to say, no, 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 I am under the shadow of the Almighty. And fear, you feel fear because fear, fear is a spirit. And if we allow it, if we give it, if we open the door, it comes and will torment you. It will torment you. And many times people walk in their healings. I know so many people that God has healed them of cancer, but it's been 10 years that they've been free from cancer or 12 years. But here and there, when it comes their, their anniversary, because they have to usually, when you've been a cancer survivor, you have to go like yearly because they want to see how you're doing. And if the doctor calls you and tells you, no, we, we need to see you again, a shadow will come. And the shadow will get bigger. And the more you digest it, the more you think, the bigger it becomes. And then we think that that shadow is bigger than our almighty. We think that that shadow is bigger than our God. And maybe God left us. Maybe, maybe he took away the healing. God doesn't take what he has given us. He said that he came for we came to give us uh, life. He came to give us freedom. Paul says that for freedom is, is the reason that we have been set free. It's not even because we're going to make it to heaven. No, he wants us to live on this earth free. Free of what? Free from fear. Free from shame. Free from condemnation. He wants us to walk in the newness of life that he can only give us. 
So take out your sword. What's your sword? The word of God. And it's time to slay all those shadows that are lurking in your life. Whatever the devil is telling you, it's a lie from the pit of hell. And you know where lies belong? In hell. We don't belong in hell. Do you know that God never created hell for people? Hell was created for the devil and his demons. And God is not sending anyone to hell. We choose. And he wants us to live in victory. He wants us, he wants us to walk in such great faith this year. Okay, let me give you a few scriptures. Let's go to Philippians 4.8. This is what we need to do so we stay in faith. This is what it says. Finally, believers. Are we believers? Yes. It says, finally, believers. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, is there any excellence, if there anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Do a, a little checkup today and say, how many times do you think every day or today, about today, forget yesterday, yesterday's gone, but today, did you think of something lovely that you meditated continually, like you chewed on, like, you know when you have something that bothers you and you, and you replay it in your mind? You had a, like a little disagreement or somebody, you know, like offended you, right? And then you play the offense over and over. And you said, I release in Jesus' name. They're to you, I forgive them. I have done that. They're yours, Lord. And then like five minutes later, you're, re you're relieving that conversation. I'm not going to think of that. And then 30 seconds later, now you're thinking now, but why did they say that? <laughs> right? I release in Jesus. And before you go to bed, it's like, how dare they? They're yours, Heavenly Father. See, without knowing, we have been meditating on things that are not lovely and of good report and they're not honorable. Without knowing, we, we fall into that trap. Believe me. You're like, you're so saint and sanctified. That doesn't happen to you. You have to fight to think lovely things. We had a devoted uh, last year, and we had a, a little exercise. And we say, okay, so this is what we're going to do. We, we, it was two women, and, and uh, it says, so choose whoever's going to speak. So nobody wanted to speak, you know. Like, no, you do, no, you do. And so anyway, so the person says, okay, whoever, you start first. And he says, okay, so you're going to tell the other person um, everything that you do well. Tell them things that you do good. Do you know that I turned around and I couldn't think of a thing? No, I do good. No, I want to talk about you. You're awesome. You're wonderful. You're such a good mom. You're, you're such a good friend. But the thing wasn't, don't talk about somebody else. Talk about things about you, that they're lovely about you, that you do well. And I couldn't really think. I was like, but what, like, what do I do good? I don't even know how to cook. I literally went on the negative to find my positives. I don't know how to cook. I think too much. I organize too much. I want things in order too much. See, because it's hard to think of lovely things. It's, it's, it's hard. And it's not that it's hard. It's because we are so, we our own nature, it's, it's, it's leading us. Our old nature has to do with our five senses, our flesh, our mind, our emotions. And so, it, but we, according to the word of God, we are new creations in him. So we are able to operate in newness. But we need to learn how to do that. 
So today I sat by myself and I said, okay, think of lovely things. Can I be honest with you? I started crying. I'm like, I can't think of lovely things. And if you don't find lonely th lovely things about you, find lovely things about your heavenly father because your heavenly father, that's who you reflect. God, we're able to have access to God. We're able to have forgiveness with God because he sees Jesus in us. In my identity, your identity as Christians, as believers, as sons and daughters, we sang it. We're no longer slaves to fear. Are we really not longer slaves to fear? In the spirit, we are. According to the word, we are. But oh, I don't feel like, I still like feel like I'm a slave sometimes. But God doesn't want us to live like slaves because we are not slaves. He paid a price for you and I. He purchased our freedom. And he wants us to live in such freedom with him. And he wants us to renew our minds and he wants us to think great things. Do me a favor and start tonight before you go to bed. Give five minutes and think of something lovely, something honorable. Something of good report. Think of things like make yourself, you're going to say, I'm going to train my mind to think of lovely things, things of good reports, things that are reputable and honorable. Not what people are saying about other people, but what God thinks about you. And then he says, and think about those things continually. And he says, and let them set and make and make place and abide in your heart. So when the devil comes, he's defeated. We don't have to contend with him anymore because he is a defeated foe. Our fights, as we continue to fight, stay, stay in, in faith. I, I want the fights to be like the last five with, who are those girls that you, we bought the fight in? The, the girl, Rhonda. I was like, oh, poor Rhonda. I was praying for her. I pray. I fell for her. But you know what I saw? I, I didn't see the fight in, in the physical. I saw the fight in the spiritual sense. I felt like she was so shocked. Because she was, she, was, she was used to winning, right? And all of a sudden, she had a defeat last year. Or I don't know when. And I think it messed, it messed her up. It shocked her. Don't let our trials and tribulations shock you. Because the devil will come and tell you, you know what? I'm going to beat you up again like I beat you up last year. Oh, you're like, oh, no, no, no. What was the other girl? The other girl's name? Nina? Well, the girl from, from Brazil, right? Oh, she was a beast, right? So like lioness, like, like. Dear Jesus, she knew who she was. Like, I'm like, that's the way, see, that's the way we need to be. The devil's come for us, like, oh, fool. That's why I want to be in the spirit, like, mm, like, no. I feel like I said, Virginia, stop being like, no, you know how to fight. I have given you victory after victory after victory. Now I rise, girl. No, 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 you be the lion, you be the lioness. And you know the beginning of our fights, because faith has to be, we all have a measure of faith, so, so faith grows, right? So our first fight, well, maybe the fight when we're fighting against the enemy, maybe some fights are long, we go like 12 rounds. And you're like, oh. but the fight is fixed, but we just don't know it. Because he comes and he he comes to he comes to tantalize us. He comes to he comes to mock us. But I love the girl from, from Brazil. She was out. Right? Like, and then he goes like, This is it, I'm the winner. I'm like, ooh, I like her. But I was like, you know, it's, that's how I know that God has changed me. I was like, Lord, please help Rhonda. Can you deliver her of fear? I felt like I cried and I even like prayed in the spirit, help her, Lord. Because I saw that that's, that's our, our, our condition at, in the body of Christ. 
we've been made, we've, we have been made to win. But because something comes and, and, and the fight was intense. I've been in, in 20 years of my life, I've been in intense fights that I had to fight to, for things that I have now. You see our families, you see our marriage, you see our church, but oh, I, we need to stand. My husband and I. Many times I was behind the ring. I'm like, I don't want to go. You fight. No, you fight. You see, because that's when we don't know who we are. But the more we go into the ring knowing that, you know what, the victory is in Christ. I am not defined by my trials. I am not defined by tribulations. I am not defined by my emotions. I am not defined by my feelings. I am defined by the word of God. And that's the only thing that will define me. So be that girl. I don't know who's the, the guy, who's the amazing guy in, in those fights. I don't know. But I love, I love all those things. I love to watch them. I think I should, I think I will be good at it. I just have a feeling. You know when you have a feeling? I already saw myself. <laughs> and I look really great. And in the back it said, elevate. Jesus, you know, you have to think of lovely things. Instead of me thinking of being defeated, why not see myself winning every time? Right? You should try it. It's awesome. Second Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Five more minutes and we're closing. And uh, the NIRV reads, this is what I love how it reads. It says, we live by what? Believing. That's the same thing as we walk by faith and not by sight. We live by believing, not by seeing. This year we're going to live by believing. We sing so many good songs. I believe in you. I wish I could sing. Give me a beat. No, just kidding. I believe in you. You're the God of my salvation. Maybe that's why I can never remember lyrics. God will not allow me. It's for your safety. It's for your safety. It's for the wholeness of your hearing. You need to know that our God is a great deliverer. Your God and my God is a great deliverer. Sometimes we think, you know, he has delivered me from too many things and things that, that the, God, the enemy just, you know, because the enemy is going to just throw his what he does best, right? He throws sickness, disease, oppression. He's going to do what he does best. There's things that I created in my own self. And then sometimes when we create things in our own self, we don't think that God is going to deliver us because they were man-made. They were designed by the art, by Virginia. But I'm going to tell you that God is your deliverer. David was a man that constantly uh, reminded himself that our God is a deliverer. Let me give you two scriptures. Psalms 18.2, this is David speaking. He says, the Lord is my rock and my salvation, my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. My shield and the, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. The apostle Paul said it in just in different ways. In 1 Corinthians 1.10, he says this, he has delivered us from such a deadly peril. And he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to what? That means God will deliver us over and 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 over. And that is, that is that good. You need to know that our God is good, that he will deliver. Well, you don't understand what I did, but he's going to deliver you. No, but I did it. I, but he's going to deliver you if you want him to deliver you. I know, but he already delivered me. And I did it again. He will deliver you. Because he made provision for us. He says that when he made provision for us, Jesus came and he died for us. He says he made provision for us. He paid for our sins, not just for the past ones that we did, but he paid for our present. And he already knows our future. So he is a deliverer. And he doesn't want you to, to smell like defeat. 
I want you to go to Daniel 3, 16 and 18, and, and I'm going to tell you a story about the three amigos. Have you heard the story of the three amigos? And it's not, it's not uh, Larry and Mo, no, no. It's Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Are you there? Okay. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answer and said to the king, okay, let me give you a little preview. So this is King Nebuchadnezzar. So we know, read the story. I want you to read the entire chapter, but this is this crazy king, right? So he, he makes this huge um, idol, and he wants everybody to worship this idol. Okay, so these three kids, they are kids, they're youth. Like our youth, and they are like righteous men. They believe in God, and they say, we are, we are not going to worship any other God but our God. So anyway, so they bring, everybody comes out, and uh, our three amigos are out. And pick, pick it up there. Sergeant Mishra Begno answered and said to the king, oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Because the king asked, how come you're not worshiping? And they said, if this is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fear furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. And it wasn't that they were saying, if not, they're just making, they want to make sure, that, you know, like, even if he doesn't come, but he, they already said it, and they already confessed and declared he's a deliverer, so he's going to deliver us. But in case, he wouldn't. We're still not going to bow down. And so the king is really upset. He says that they even turned red. No, that's, I added that to the part. You see how creative I am? And so he gets really upset. I picture him like, oh, like. So he gets really upset. And he gets, he says that he gets a few mighty men, uh, like, like cardinals, you know, like I, I picture like, you know, strong men, taller, like you're coming. They're getting these three kids because they're like three kids. And, and so they're with their old clothes, their turbans and everything is in there's a, couple of men, so they take the kids, and, and they, he reheats the furnace, like, I don't know how many times. Seven times. The devil was going to say, like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the heat in your life seven times. Let's see how you do in this trial. And the kids are like, you know what? We have a deliverer. He's going to deliver us. So the, the, the guys go, and they put him in the furnace, and the guys get killed. They get They get burned. So they go into in, in, in the furnace, and all of a sudden, King Nebuchadnezzar is like, I see the three amigos, and I see one more amigo in there. And this amigo looks like the son of God. And see, I want to tell you that even if we go through fri uh, trials and tribulation and, and things that are really hard, we're never alone. We are never alone. Many times God is not going to deliver us from a trial and a tribulation, but he's going to take us out of it. So either he's going to stop it or he's going to take me out. As in like pull me out of the fire. And then the other verse 27, I think. If we, uh -huh. And this is jumping um, a few uh, verses. And this is in the satra satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's council he gathered together. And they saw that this man on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor their garments affected. And the smell of fire was not on them. You know, we read it like I read it. It's pretty awesome. We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is real. This is not real TV like our TV, right? This is real. It truly happened. But everything is the Bible so we can learn. So don't know, do not be afraid. If you're going through a, a fiery trial and tribulation, do not be afraid because God is with you. And at the end of our trial and tribulation, you know what? We're not going to smell like cinch. I'm, I'm not going to smell like bitterness. I'm not going to smell like failure because it doesn't define me. Have you seen people that suffer something huge and traumatic years ago? Maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, they had a fallout with people, whatever, and they still to this day, they smell like bitterness. And you can even taste it if you talk to them because they spew it, you smell it. You smell their attitude. Well, God is trying to tell you, I'm your deliverer, so I'm going to deliver you. So you do not be afraid of the fiery trials and tribulations. You need to be convinced that I am with you in it, and I'm going to deliver you out of it. And at the end of your trial, you're not going to smell like, you're not going to look like it, you're going to look like me. We're not going to smell like failure. I'm not going to smell like 2016. 
I'm going to smell good this year. I'm going to take more showers. No, just kidding. We, like, you're like, do you take showers? Yes, I do, people. The only smell that we need to have is the aroma of Jesus Christ. Can people smell you? Smell is very strong. You will know if you come to my house if I cook because I burn everything. And if I use oil, it smells like oh, canola for days. And I don't even use canola, but that's all I smell. My hair smells like horrible because of the smoke of, 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 of the burn. Don't let life burn you. Don't let situations or people, don't, do not become a burnout Christian. Do not allow yourself to be burned out by life. I, I'm preaching to myself. I will not allow what I've been through to define me. I'm not going to smell like it by choice. Because I believe in my God and he is a deliverer. So 2017 is a year of breakthrough. 2017 is a year of victory. 2017 is a year of wholeness and healing. 2017 is a year of deliverance. 2017 is a year that we're going to break free. And we're not going to smell. We're not going to smell like what happened to us with people, with yourself, or with your family or your spouse. No, you're not going to smell like it. Because you're going to choose to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And you're going to smell like Jesus. And when we smell like Jesus, it's more power to the cross. Like we're able to say, you know, I went through this with my family and look at where we are. And people tell you, you don't even, I would have never guessed. Because I haven't allowed the smell and the burn to, to consume me. Let the presence of God, let the word of God, let the love of God consume you this year. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.